Welcome back to the studio. I'm Guru Catherine, founder of Geode Blockchain and guide for your personal and spiritual journey. Today we're going to be talking about a question that I get quite often and it's a really good one and that is where do I start? So if you are just entering into the personal journey, uh, whether it's more on the personal side or more on the spiritual side and you want to know where to begin, this is the video for you. Uh, if you like what you see here today, um, there are lots of links below where you can find, explore so many things. So go check it out. Um, resources for you, so much stuff. So we're going to talk today about where to begin. Now, if <clears throat> you are only interested in beginning on the spiritual side of this, I'm going to talk about that in a second. Normally, I recommend that you work the personal journey more holistically. So it's spiritual, financial, mental and emotional, physical. It's the whole like professional, the whole thing. And the reason I recommend actually working the whole thing all at once is because it's far more efficient because every part of your journey is tied together. Your money is affecting your emotions and all of that is affecting your body and all of that is affecting your professional life y you, and all of that is affecting your spirituality. You can't really separate one from the other, right? If you have a health problem, you're going to have issues at work, right? If you've got a work problem, you may have issues at home. Um, it all, it just, it all intertwines together. So I really, really recommend that you work, work it holistically, which is why I wrote this book, Purna Asati. So check the links below. It's linked everywhere on my stuff. Go find it. And it guides you through the whole thing. So I'm going to give you some of the basics today. So the reason it has you start in a certain place is because you need a foundation on your journey. You need a foundation. If you're worried about how you're going to make rent, you're not in a place where you can really have a lot of spiritual growth. You can't because you're too worried about money. So you want to start with the basics. And if you follow this set of psychological stages, you're just going to get through it all so much. I mean, 10x faster, much, much more efficiently and more effectively. So I would actually start you with grabbing a journal of whatever kind. I don't care if it's digital or paper. It doesn't matter to me. What works for you? And start exploring your past experiences. This is why therapy helps. Start all the way back <laughs> from as far as you can remember exploring your experiences and working with the ones that upset you. Go back through your life. What have you experienced? What was upsetting to you? What was traumatic to you? Um, trying to work through that. What does that mean? Working through that means getting to a point where instead of telling your story over and over, this happened to me, this happened to me. You have integrated the lessons from it and let the rest of it go. That's what processing means. So you want to explore all those experiences, asking yourself, what are the lessons? What did I learn here? And what are the gifts that I got out of it? Every single scenario has something, even if it's just a lesson that you got out of it, something. Look for that. The next thing you're going to end up doing is focusing on your needs. Your mental, physical, emotional needs, your professional and intellectual needs, your spiritual needs. And there are many, obviously food, clothing, shelter. Yes, write that down. But there may be other needs as well, which is why I have exercises. I have homework, <laughs> so much homework in this book. So you want to focus on that, but you've got to clear your experiences first before you focus on your needs. You want a catalog of your needs. 
write them all down. And then you want to figure out, can I meet my needs? Work on meeting your needs. Work on getting what you need. Do that first. Then you're going to end up focusing on other people's needs. The needs of the people you love. And then kind of expanding out from there. Then you're going to have a focus on your ideology. And this is a good time for the spirituality to come in more heavily. Because your ideology is your religious ideology, your social ideology, your political ideology, your moral ideology. It, it's all the beliefs you have about what is true and how to live and what you ought to do and not do. It's all of that. And for some people, that's more religion than political. And for some people, it's more political than religious. Um, it's usually a mix of the two in some way. That's a good spot for the, the spirituality to come in heavily. Um, and you have to go through this process of questioning your ideology, questioning everything, questioning your job, your relationships, your, your, your religion, your spirituality. I mean, everything, your experiences, your needs, go back to that. Um, and questioning everything as you come around into stage seven. And then from there, seeking purpose. Now, I've gone through this very quickly. You will not go through this that quickly. I recommend, on average, one stage a month. That is the, the pace that I, I, I would, the first time you go through it, don't go faster than that. Don't go faster than one stage a month. Or your rate of change for you may be too rapid. You may have too rapid a life change. Um, so the first time you go through it, I would say one stage a month. Uh, after you've been through it, then you'll notice you can comfortably cycle back through all of that homework much, much more rapidly over time to the point that you, you run through the whole thing in an hour. So that's, that's where I would begin. Begin with processing your past experiences but that's only the beginning that's that's step one then you need to go into understanding your needs understanding the needs of others questioning your ideology reframing that as needed um, to align with your recurrent where you're at right now um, and then questioning all kinds of other things and bringing the spirituality in so now let's get into at this moment where to begin with simply the spirituality side of it. And there are exercises in here, um, but let me give you kind of the, the simplest version of it because this depends, and this is something I didn't address in the book. Did you grow up with a religion, a particular organized religion, going to temple, going to a church, going to whatever? Were you participating in an organized religion growing up? Are you currently participating in an organized religion? And the flow chart looks like this. So if I ask you, did you experience a particular organized religion growing up? And you might say yes. Did you like it? Or did you not like it? <laughs> if you grew up with a particular religion, or you're currently participating in a particular organized religion and you like it it feeds your soul it's working for you then the sacred text of that organized religion is the one I would pick up first first notice I said first not last first pick up the book and start reading it you would be blown away with how many people have not read <laughs> the sacred text of the organized religion they claim to be a part of. Shocking. Most people of a given organized religion have not read the book they claim is their sacred text. It's a real eye-opener when you do. Eventually, I would like you to have read them all. Well, what is all? I don't know. The top 12. And I realize this gets rough <laughs> because 
some of the top sacred texts in the world are really a hard read. <laughs> like they're they're difficult. They're they can be incredibly violent. And um, and yes, I'm talking about the the Bible is, is incredibly violent and it's salacious. And it's an eye opener. Um, but I want you to read them all. So, and and understand that by reading other sacred texts, other than the one that you either grew up with or the one you currently ascribe to, you are not blaspheming. You're not. Because I, let me tell you what you're going to find. You're going to find essentially the same exact truths across them all. All of them. So if you have one you like in particular, start there. If you did not grow up with a particular religion, or if you didn't like the one you grew up with, or you don't like the one you're currently involved with, or if you're not currently involved with any of them, if you're starting with that spot where we can kind of come from a blank slate, then I would start with something like the Tao Te Ching or the Dhammapada. Why? Because they are the simplest. Now you could find versions of these books that are annotated by modern theologians. Or you can find, I, I actually like versions of these books that have no annotation at all. Zero. Really pure. Just the, just the original writing. They're incredibly short. So the, the, the actual Dhammapada is incredibly short. The Tao Te Ching is incredibly short. And that's why I like those to start with. They're small and they're simple. If you have no particular preference and you decide to start with like the King James Bible, you are going to run away screaming before you finish Genesis. Just because, well, a lot of things. That's another video. <laughs> as much as it reads like a tabloid, um, and you would think that ought to be pretty exciting. It, it's, uh, it's problematic for someone who is new to spirituality because you will have, especially with the Old Testament, a very hard time finding a reason to be spiritual from that thing, from that particular set of books. Um, and that's not the only sacred text out there that's kind of a rough uh, it's like slogging through molasses. But that being said, there are nuggets of truth in every sacred text out there. And I recommend ultimately getting through them all with a curiosity that says, what of this text is historical context? Because there's a lot of that. And what of this text is a real nugget of truth? What's a lesson? Because a lot of times, um, not in the Tao Te Ching and not in the Dhammapada, but, but in some of the other books in, in the Bible and the Quran and um, um, some of the other ones, some of the, the Hindu texts, you're getting things in the form of a story. It's a story. These people went here and they did these things and these things happened. And when, when you get things in the form of a story... You have to pull out the nuggets of truth yourself. They're not going to just hit you in the face. You have to pull it out yourself. You have to notice. Right? And so, you know, for example, in the story of, of Moses wandering in the desert, you, you, the reader may become very frustrated going, oh my God, why didn't they just listen? Why, didn't they, why are they so ungrateful? And there's the lesson, right? So you look at where your frustrations are when you're reading the story and go, oh my gosh, they should have been more grateful. Oh my gosh, they should have listened. Why did they do this? I don't know. Um, and, and so you're pulling out sort of those, those bits for yourself. Um, 
Some scholars and theologians also like to look at those story-based texts in terms of metaphor, right? As opposed to saying, was, were they literally wandering in the desert or was that a metaphor for the journey of self-introspection, right? And the real question becomes not who of those scholars is right, but what speaks to you? When you read that story, does the metaphor speak to you or does something more uh, realistic speak to you? What speaks to you when you read these texts? What's jumping out at you? What is it when you hit that sentence and you have to go, wait a minute, stop, go back, and you read it again because something in you lit up. And when you read these texts, and again, if you don't have a particular one you want to start with, I would start small, simple, and easy <laughs> with the, the Dhammapada original, no annotation, and, and then the Tao Te Ching, again, original, no annotation. Simple, small pieces of text at a time. Why? Because you're not going to read through this thing like you're reading a crime novel you're going to read through it one sentence at a time. One tiny little set of four lines, maybe, at a time. And you're going to stop, and you're going to think about it. It's a lot like reading a math textbook, actually. So... Read it one little bit at a time. Don't try to speed through it. It's not about the completion. It's allowing it to speak to you. What is the truth here? And, and in all of these, you're going to see some amount of historical context, right? <laughs> so I like to beat up on, on the, the Bible and the Quran for these two issues. But, you know, for example, in the Bible, there's just pages upon pages about What's the right thing to do if someone digs a hole and someone else's ox falls in the hole? Okay, well, there's a basic concept there of tort law, but um, that's a historical artifact, right? I guess that was a real issue at the time. These days, I don't see that as being quite such an issue. So that's historical context versus a particular nugget of truth that says that God lives in our hearts, things like that. So separate the historical from the philosophical or the historical from the spiritual and take what speaks to you. So that's it. So on the spiritual side, start with the book that you personally prefer, if you prefer one. If you don't personally prefer a particular book, then um, start small and simple. Go Dhammapada, unannotated, uh, Tao Te Ching, unannotated. Um, the annotated versions get interesting later. Uh, but start to start there and work your way up to the tougher ones, the ones that are a little bit more, um, take a little bit more fortitude <laughs> to get through. I love them all. I actually, I really do. And I recommend ultimately that you read them all. Because what's going to happen when you read them all is you're going to recognize how they're all saying the same thing. Hmm. And the unity of truth is where you begin to unify the self. Story for another time. All right. Thank you for joining me. Send me your questions, your thoughts, and your ideas. Uh, work through the stages. You can find more about that in the links below. Uh, and if I can be helpful, please do let me know. Uh, what I can address for you here. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.